Farina's first ever rerun is here, and by now I think we all know that she's one of, if not the best character in the entire game, so I'm here to tell you everything that you need to know to make your Farina OP without any of the BS. For more in-depth information, please check out my written Farina guide, which you can view on the Kaching Main's website. For Farina's talent priority, Leveling her burst and skill will both make a similar impact on her personal damage, but her burst also improves the buffing for the entire team, so you'll want to prioritize her burst and then her skill, and both talents are worth getting to level 10. For Farina's weapons, her weapon options can vary in value depending on how much energy she needs in your specific team, but for her personal damage, Splendor is always going to be her strongest weapon, with Jade Cutter and Uraku as close alternatives. Uraku in particular is almost identical to Splendor if there was a second Geo unit on the team. For more accessible weapon options, Festering Desire is her go-to 4-star option, but if you missed out on it, the Craftable Ferryman Sword isn't too far behind. Bavonia's Sword is also a great option, it is quite behind Festering and Ferryman for Freena's personal damage, but in some teams, reducing the entire team's energy requirements can be worth the trade-off. Key of Cajunous Jute is also a great weapon in some teams, as it will provide the team with a large and long-lasting EM buff, so it's great for reaction-based teams such as Reverse Vaporize and Quick Bloom. For Freena's artifact sets, Golden Troop is easily her best set for her damage, the only alternative is two-piece two-piece options, but Golden Troop is far enough to head to be worth using even if your substats on it aren't the greatest. Tenacity of the Millilith is also usable on Farina. In most cases, it won't be worth it over Golden Troop, but in teams where Farina's personal damage isn't as important and most of the damage comes from an attack scaling unit, if no one else on the team can use Tenacity, then it can be fine to use it on Farina. For the main stats, use ER or HP Sands. ER if needed to hit your energy requirements, otherwise HP. For the Goblet, HP% percent is ideal. Hydro can be used if you have a better Hydro Goblet than HP, as Hydro isn't too far behind, but over time you should try to get HP. And for the Circlet, Crit is always best, but like the Goblet, HP isn't too far behind, it can be used if you have a considerably better HP circlet than crit. For the substats, prioritize ER until you hit your ER requirements for your team. Then focus on crit with HP substats also being fine to pick up as well. And for those energy requirements, again, they vary heavily from team to team. Here is a table with ideal ranges of ER to aim for in some different scenarios, but do keep in mind that these are just sample ranges to aim for, so I would highly recommend calculating the energy requirements in your specific team with an energy recharge calculator. When building a Farina team, it is very important to include a healer, as without one, you will not get much buffing or personal damage out of Farina. Since healers are such an integral part of Farina's team building, here are some healers that are particularly good to consider. Bennett is great because although he only heals the active character when their HP goes below 70%, the HP drain from Farina will ensure that this happens fairly often. You won't have as much fanfare with him compared to other healer options, but his attack buffing is large enough to make him easily the best option in attack scaling DPS teams. Kuki is also a single target healer like Bennett that can be worth using because the value she brings herself is high enough to make up for the lower fanfare. Her AoE Electro application makes her great for Quick Bloom and Hyper Bloom teams. For team-wide healers, some really good ones are Baizu, Charlotte, Mika, Jean, and Jian Yun. Baizu has R-Filled Denture application alongside some micro-shielding with his burst, so he works well for pretty much any Dendro team archetype. Charlotte provides R-Filled AoE Cryo application, so when paired with Farina, she provides Freeze. This makes her great for Freeze teams like Ayaka and Ganyu, but also any other team that can appreciate having the Freeze, such as Nivellet and Wanderer. Mika has buffs for physical damage as well as attack speed, so he will be the best option for physical teams, while being a good option for characters that can use his attack speed very well, such as Wanderer. Jean is a Nemo, so she can assist team damage with 4-piece VB set for resistance shred, 
which can be very nice in teams where most of the damage is coming from the same swallowable element. At C4, she also gains Anemo Resistant Shred, making her good with Anemo DPS units. And Jian Yu, like Jean, can use 4-piece BB, but she also enables plunging and provides massive buffs to plunge damage, so she is phenomenal for characters that want this, such as the Luke, Gaming, and Zhao. Now there are also a few other healers that work well, but need to be used on field in a team of more focused around them as a main DPS or driver, and those units are Noelle, Dory, and Kokomi. Now, for the types of teams Farina should be used in, She's quite possibly the most universal character in the entire game, so there's no shortage of teams she's going to work great in. Pretty much any team can fit in a good healing unit without having to make compromises, while also not being harmed by Hydro application, we'll appreciate having Farina. I will show some example teams, broken down into specific categories. I won't spend too long covering these teams, as we will be here all day if I do, but you can find more details on them in my written guide on Kaching mains. So the first category is Double Hydro slash Mono Hydro teams. These teams use Farina alongside other Hydro units, allowing both her and the other Hydro to have much lower energy requirements so that they can build for more damage. Farina and the other Hydro will also be able to benefit from most if not all the same buffs, such as Hydro Resonance, for a piece BB, Kazuha, or Archaic Petra. On top of that, Using two Hydro units can also be great for enabling reactions, such as Hyperbloom, Tazar, Burgeon, and Vaporize for Pyro units that are too fast for solo Hydro. A couple of examples of good double slash mono Hydro Farina teams are Nuvalet, Farina, Kazuha, and either Zhongli or Charlotte, Yelan, Farina, Zingshou, Jean, Raiden, Farina, Yelan, Jean. The next team category is Reverse Vaporize. These teams take advantage of Farina's Hydro application to allow a Pyro unit to vaporize all their damage. For some Pyro units, Farina's Hydro application alone isn't fast enough and will need to be paired with another Hydro unit or a Hydro if infused Anemo ability. But this is fine because, as Prior mentioned, there are a ton of other great benefits to using Farina with another Hydro. Some example teams are Hu Tao, Farina, Yelan Oising Show, and Bennett. The Luke or Gaming, Farina, Janyun, Bennett, and Lenny, Farina, Kazuha, Bennett. Now for the next category, Farina also works great in forward vaporize teams where you have fast pyro application enabling Farina to vaporize her own damage. Example teams are Lenny, Farina, Jongling, Bennett, Klee, Farina, Kazuha, Bennett, and Risley, Farina, Jongling, Bennett. Now moving on from vaporize, we now have Quick Bloom. Farina's slower rate of Hydro application makes her great in Quick Bloom, as she will not remove the Quicken Aura too often, but still allow for a decent amount of Hyper Blooms. And Farina's long lasting Hydro application and buffing allows her to work great in the long rotations that the best Quick Bloom teams want to perform. Example Quick Bloom teams are Sino, Farina, Nahida, Baizu, Alhaitham, Farina, Nahida, Kuki, and Clarand, Farina, Nahida, Fischl. Freeze is also a team category for Farina, as she provides an excellent combination of Hydro application, buffing, and sub-DPS damage for these teams that no other Hydro unit can. Example teams are Ayaka, Farina, Charlotte, Kazuha, and Ganyu, Farina, Charlotte, and Kazuha, or Venti. And for the last team category, these are characters that benefit greatly from Farina's buffing and sub-DPS damage, but don't particularly care about her being Hydro, so these will mainly be characters of damage types that don't really use reactions to amplify their damage, such as Anemo, Geo, and even Physical. Some example teams like this are Navia, Farina, Chiari, Bennett, Noel, Farina, Chiari, Goro, Zhao, Farina, Farazan, Jianyun, Wanderer, Farina, Farazan, Bennett, and Eula, Farina, Mika, Raiden. Now lastly, for Farina's constellations, I'm sure by now we all know she has some of the best in the entire game, where C1 and C2 are phenomenal early constellations, providing massive team damage increases to all of Farina's teams. The buffing from C1 and C2 are also front-loaded, so Farina's buff being pretty back-loaded at C2 is no longer a problem with these constellations. 
C3 isn't quite as big of an increase as C1 and C2, but it's still a decent amount of extra buffing. C4 gives Fruina a really good amount of self-energy refund, which can allow her to deal a lot more damage by needing a lot less energy recharge. C5 is another large damage increase by increasing her skill level. Then C6 lets her do incredible on-field DPS stuff, while also giving her excellent team-wide healing, thus freeing up her teams from needing to slot in a healer. So if you are looking to vertically invest in two Freena constellations, they are all great and there is no bad stopping point, but the most advisable stopping points are either C1 or C2. And that's just about everything you need to know to make your Farina OP. Once again, if you're still looking for more in-depth information, please check out my written guide on Kaching Mains. If you liked today's video, please be sure to give a like and subscribe, and comment below letting me know your thoughts. Thanks, goodbye.